Okay, we're going to shoot a little, bit, a little video here to go through the uh, measurement process to create a model in RC Crew Chief. So, sitting on my desk here, I have a brand spanking new AEB 44.2 four wheel drive off road buggy, 110 scale. So, before we start doing anything, the, the most important thing to do is to make sure that you have your car set up. You want to be measuring the, the uh, dimensions of the components with all your uh, with your car set up as if you were going to take it out on the track. So you want your camber settings, your ride height, everything set exactly as you would before you go out and uh, do practice at race. So that's what I've got this on the setup stand here right now. I just want to make sure all the camber settings are the same and the ride height is uh, is set properly. So the next step is is that we need some sheets that we can write everything down with. So we're just going to pop over here and open up RC Crew Chief and go to the chassis manager and then on the top of each tab here you'll see a measurement worksheet. So if we open that and click on the measurement worksheet, we'll print one of those and go to the front suspension, open that up and we're going to print two of those because we need one for the front and one for the rear. And so we'll print two of those. Go to the shock tab and go to the measurement worksheet. And we'll print two of those as well because we need one for the front and one for the rear. And these sheets just make it easy for you to record the measurements that you're taking. Uh, making it that much easier to enter the numbers into the program once you've got all the measurement complete. So now we'll look at the springs too. We have a measurement worksheet for that. And just print one of those because it has a front and rear space on it. And last but not least, the anti-roll bars. Uh, so this is the geometry. Like that. Okay. Now we can go back and start dismantling the car so that we can take some measurements on the very. Okay, we're going to measure the X1, Y1 dimension. Uh, this is the dimension. Uh, from the center line of the chassis to the center line of the hinge pin is your X1 dimension and the Y1 dimension is from the underside of the chassis to the center line of the hinge pin. So these are fairly easy to determine. You can see what I've done here is I've stripped all the suspension components off and I've reinstalled the hinge pin. And this allows us to gain easy access to the hinge pin. So what we do here is we just take our calipers and we measure from the outside to the outside of the pin. And you just sort of roll this back and forth until you get a maximum reading. So that looks like about 50.8. And the other dimension you need is the diameter of the pin itself. So the pin itself is 2.7. So take those two numbers. Drop them in here, 50.8 was the measurement from the outside to the outside of the pin and 2.7 was a pin diameter. So what we want is the distance to the center line of the pin, so if we take the outside dimension and what we would do is measure or take half of the diameter of this pin and half of the diameter of that pin or half plus a half gives you a hole, uh, subtract the full pin diameter and we want the dimension to the center line of the chassis, so we divide that by 2. Do that little calculation, that's your X1 dimension. Y1's a little bit trickier. Uh, this car has kick up on it, so what we want to do is we want to measure the average height. So we want the height to the to the pretty much the midpoint of the um, uh, suspension arm. So we're going to take an average of two measurements. We're going to measure it on the low side of this and we're going to measure it on the high side of that and then we're going to take the average of those two dimensions. So if we do the low side first, just make sure we're sitting on the pin and we take a couple of readings there. So we go and we do the 
the same thing on the high side. Okay, so what I got there was 7.6 and 7.3 or and 5.35. So we take 7.6 plus 5.35 divided by 2, and that gives us our average. And then the other thing we have to do is we have to subtract half of the diameter of the pin because we want the dimension to the to the uh, center line of the hinge pin. So we take off half of the diameter of the pin, which was 2.7 divided by 2. Again, do that quick little calculation, and that's your Y1 dimension. Okay, we're going to now start measuring some of the individual components. We're going to start with the suspension arm itself. Um, so the first dimension we want is the length of the arm, or the L-arm dimension, which goes from the center line of this hinge pin to the center line of that hinge pin. So again, just lay our calipers on here, roll it back and forth until we get a consistent reading. So it looks like 79.98. So 79.98 and then both our hinge pins 2.7 and 2.7. So our L arm dimension is our 75.98 which was the um, dimension outside to outside of the pins and then we again want the dimension to the center line of the hinge point so we would subtract one half of this di pin diameter one half of that pin diameter or make it simple the whole pin diameter so 75.98 minus 2.7 that's your alarm dimension okay well we've got this thing in front of us the other things that we can measure is we need to know what the uh, position of the anti-roll bar connection is relative to that pin point and we also need to know what the uh, position of the shock mount to the suspension arm is. So I've just pre-installed the screw here just makes it easier to uh, to measure the dimension because I want it to be horizontal all the way across so again we just rock back and forth that looks like 42.81 so now we need to go to our shock page, which is here. So what we just measured there was actually the outermost point. So that would be our LN. So it was 42.81. Then we need to measure or subtract off one half of this hinge pin diameter. So half of the inner hinge pin and then half of the diameter of the screw which is 2.8 so okay so that's your LN uh, you do the same thing for the inner one just take your screw move it over do the same measurement again I'm not going to bore you and do that in front of you uh, now the other one is our this is our anti-roll bar where our anti-roll bar would mount so we need to measure that position as well so we're just going to get in here, actually I think I should be able to get it, 26, I was wondering maybe I should go inside, no that's not better, okay, sometimes you have to move around and do things a little differently, but so that looks like 27 point Keep slipping off the inside here. 27.05. So if we go to our anti roll bar page, which is the last page. So on the front, the dimension that we just measured there was our LARB. So it is 27.05. Now from that again we got to subtract our inner hinge pin diameter. And we also have to subtract half of the diameter of the inside of this, which is what I was measuring to. So just need to get that. That's 2.7. So minus 2.7 divided by 2. So that calculation gives you your LARB value. 
Okay, that's about all we can get off that component. Now we can move on to the camber link. So we'll go back to our, our suspension link page. Uh, camber link, just measure. You know, there's a few ways you can do it. If they both these were pointing the same way, you can measure inside to inside and take off half the diameter. But since these are rotated 90 degrees to each other, we're going to measure the overall. Looks like I got a little burr on the end of that. I want to take that off. I should have a knife here. I'm just going to take that off. Just a little piece of the. You're going to smooth. Okay. So our camber link is going to be 71.86. 71.86. Now off of that, we want to gain, we want to be to the center point of both of these. So what we're going to do is we're just going to measure the outside diameter of that, which is 7.27. So we're going to take off half of that and half of that, or whole. So we're just going to take off 7.27. So 71.86 minus 7.27, that's your L camber link. Okay, now we're going to determine the uh, kingpin pin length and the L axle dimension. Uh, these are generally the trickiest ones to come up with because you got so many little bosses and bumps and angles and stuff going on here that you have to get a little creative sometimes. So what I've done is I've just installed a uh, cap screw in here because it gives me a nice easy surface to uh, measure to. And what I'm going to do because what I actually want is the distance to the midpoint of this hinge pin. You can see the angle that it's going through there on. Uh, so I'm going to take a couple of measurements here and then I'm going to average them. So I'm going to go on one side of this and I'm just going to again just sort of roll it back and forth until you get get the maximum number. So it looks like 34.72 and on this side, it looks again like about 34.72, 34.74. Good, which is what you would hope because this should be parallel to that. Uh, so we'll take the average of those two numbers, and then what we want is the we want center line of pivot point to center line of pivot point. So we're going to take off half of the diameter of this boss here, which is 7.27, and half of the diameter of the screw, which is I want to be in the, which is 2.2.7. So I've already done that calculation here. So we had 34.74 plus 34.67. Divide that by 2, that gives us our average. Then we subtract off half of the diameter of the lower boss and half of the diameter of the screw. Do that calculation. That's going to give you your kingpin. Now the axle, L axle dimension, which is from the center of the um, axle line to the center of the hub lower pivot. So we want this dimension basically here. So it can be a little tricky to get and sometimes you have to take make sacrifices so I'm just going to measure from the bottom of there to this which is 6.05 yeah, let's call it 6.06 .06. so we're going to say we've got 6.06 .06. Now, I was measuring to the bottom side of this boss, so we've got to take off half of the diameter of that boss, which again is 7.27. So 
So we're going to subtract 7.27 divided by 2. And then we've got to add the diameter that I was measuring here. So we go inside of that, roll it around a little bit. Make sure we're getting our maximum. So it looks like about 13.94. So we add 13.94 divided by 2. And there you go. That's your L axle dimension. Okay, next thing we need to do is uh, finish off our suspension worksheet here. So the dimensions we're missing right now are the uh, uh, positions of the inner camber link mount, so the X2 and the Y2 dimensions. And this is going to take a little trickery to, to get this dimension. The X dimension is going to be fairly straightforward. Uh, we're just going to measure the outside to outside of, of uh, these ball studs here. So make sure we're on it. And it looks like 58.43. And the diameter of the ball stud is 4.2. So let's verify this. 58.4 so we got 58.4 we're going to subtract off of that the full diameter of the ball stud because we're doing outside to outside and then we want the distance to the center line of the chassis so divide that by two now the Y2 dimension is going to be a little more difficult because you can see our ball studs are on the underside of this top plate. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to measure the height of the top plate from the underside of the chassis and then we'll do a little adding and subtracting and get the number we need. So looks like 42.74 so let's write that one down. Okay, so I've disassembled the uh, uh, ball stud from the top of the uh, chassis here so I can measure uh, the dimensions I need to get to the center of the, uh, of the ball stud. So there was a shim here, so we've measured the uh, thickness of the shim and it turns out to be about 0.7. So I've got the thickness of the chassis, because we are measuring from the top of the chassis to the underside of the chassis, so we're subtracting off the thickness of the chassis. We're subtracting off the thickness of the shim, which is 0.78. And then we need to figure out where the center of the ball stud is. So I'm measuring from the underside of the shoulder to the top surface there and that comes out to be about 6.48, 6.49 so that's what I've got there. Now I need to go from the top of this to the center of the ball stud. So the ball stud diameter is 4.2 millimeters so I subtract off half of the 4.2 millimeters. Now this ball stud has the hex drive in the end of it so they've machined the top of it flat and to get back to where the theoretical spear would be would mean adding about 0.6 millimeters 0.5 millimeters so that's what I've done here is I've added another 0.5 millimeters to the dimension so that should put me right smack dab in the center of that pivot point so a little bit of a creative measuring technique to get there but uh, you can get there you just gotta, gotta put your thinking cap on sometimes Okay, so that takes care of all the dimensions on the uh, uh, front suspension chassis sheet. Now the other thing I've added here is there's two positions on the camber, on the uh, hub for the upper camber link. So I've gone and just added another screw in there and I've measured those uh, dimensions. 
and the other thing that you want to add in here as well is the location of the any alternate inner uh, positions for the camera like I've measured this one yet but there are two positions here on the top plate for the uh, upper camera link so I'm gonna go ahead and measure that but I'm not gonna bore you showing you how to do it because it's basically just moving these over into there and measuring that outside outside dimension again uh, the other thing to pay attention to is your shims this uh, uh, hinge or camber link did have a a uh, shim in it so when we go to enter the information in we will be entering the value for uh, the ball stud with a shim under it so to get back to the zero point we will uh, subtract one off and, and use that as an alternate position to uh, um, to the camber link table. Okay, another thing you need to add here is the camber. This was set up with minus one degree of camber and the ride height I believe is 21 millimeters. So that's pretty much it for the front suspension. We just got to do a little, couple more measurements on the uh, um, shocks and we will be done so I'm just gonna shut off for a second and we'll uh, get the rest of the measurements for the shocks okay we're almost done here um, last thing we have to measure is the uh, upper mounting points for the uh, shock so I've still got everything disassembled here and we just want to measure the vertical distance so set it in there on the ball and take a couple measurements 67.3 looks like a pretty good number so and we're on the inside so we're measuring the the uh, the inner position so we were measuring vertically down so the other thing that we need is the diameter of the uh, ball here the pivot ball that it's working off of which is 4.7 so we got 67.3 minus 4.7 we want the midpoint of that the center of the pivot point so we got to divide it by 2 so that's your Y1 dimension. Your X1 dimension, we're just going to measure to the outside, outside of the ball. Make sure we're on it. And just roll it a bit. 54.27. So the X1 is 54.27. 27 minus we need the center to center uh, point and measured from the center of the chassis so let's uh, uh, we need to subtract the whole diameter of the ball and then we need to divide that whole thing by two okay we repeat the same measurement take these move them to the outer outer position repeat that measurement process and there's your xn yn now one last thing I'd just like to show because this can be a little tricky to determine fortunately in most cases the manufacturer does give you the spring rate but I thought it would be worthwhile to show you in case you don't get spring rates from your manufacturer how to use the spring rate calculator to determine them so what you do is you hold the spring this is the way I do it with the the start of the coil sitting vertically up and then what you want to do is count the active coils. So the number of active coils is coils that are not touching each other. So the first one is touching, so that one doesn't count. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then the last coil, we need to determine whether it's a full coil or only a partial coil. So with our, our uh, starting point pointing vertically up, we just look on the end to see where the end of it comes and there it is there it is not a full coil and looking on the end that would be about the three-quarter point so I would say that's about 7.8 coils so what we do is on our little sheet here we enter the number of coils so I've already determined that was 7.8 
the diameter of the wire so we just take the diameter of the wire here and that is 1.3 millimeters and then we measure the inside diameter of the wire or of the uh, the spring and that is 16.41 so write those numbers down and then let's just go over and and fire RC crew chief up here and we're just going to put our units back to metric so we can enter these numbers which I've already done here so we got 1.3 wire diameter 1 point or 16.4 millimeter inside diameter of the spring and the number of active coils is 7.8 so that gives us a spring rate of 6.65 newton millimeters if we want to see what that is in pounds per inch we'll just change our units here to imperial so that gives you a, a spring rate of 3.74 pounds per inch and the spring rate according to associated is 3.9 so pretty darn close probably within the measurement tolerance on their spring rate measurements so if you don't have spring rates great little tool to uh, to determine what they are okay that's it we're gonna next step is going to be to do the rear suspension I'm not going to bore you with that because it's basically just a repeat of the front but what I will do is measure the rear up and then and I will go through uh, entering all the values into RC Crew Chief so you can get the full picture so stay tuned okay now we've got the car back together tires on it but shocks not on it because what we're gonna do now is we're gonna measure the front and rear unsprung mass so what I've got is I've just got the car, the chassis portion of the car is just being supported by a couple of sedan tires here so that it is, all the weight of the car is basically sitting on those tires. Uh, that allows us to just measure the weight of the wheels and axles and tie rods and camber links uh, that are being supported out at the tire, which is your unsprung mass. So. All I need to do is turn on my scales here, let them zero, and then just sort of bounce the tires a few times. And you can see there we got 82.9 on both sides. So this is the front of the car, so that gives us an unsprung mass of 82.9 plus 82.9. Now we have to add on the weight of the shocks. So the normal way, or the normally accepted way to do this is you just weigh a shock and take that as the total. So that would mean basically half of the shock weight is being carried by the chassis and the other half of the weight is being carried on the uh, uh, suspension arm as unsprung mass. So, simple procedure, just weigh one shock. 20.2 grams so plus 20.2 okay so there's your front unsprung mass so now we're just going to turn the whole thing around and we'll measure the rear You should get pretty close numbers between left and right. You see, I got a little bit of a difference here. There is some friction and stiction and all kinds of stuff going on with all these little pivot balls and and sliding connections here with axles and stuff. So don't be too concerned if it's not 100% exact between sides. Uh, you know, you can only do so much here. So if we just if we get it fairly close. 80.6 and 79.9 so we're going to say 80.6 plus 79.9 and then we just need to measure one of our shocks and that's 22 so total those numbers up and that is your front and rear unsprung mass okay we're down to the final measurement we need to make 
and that is determining the uh, total weight of the car and the location of the center of gravity. So we do that all in one step. Uh, I've got my four wheel scales here. Car is totally assembled, shocks on, body on, just like we are going to uh, take it out on the track. So let's get going. So we just zero out our scales here. Settle the car and take the readings. So we got 400. 407, 423, and 441. Okay, I just printed out a, uh, if you can see this, I just printed out the uh, sheet from the center of gravity calculator. Just gives you an easy thing to uh, write the numbers down on. So that'll tell us what the location of the center of gravity is in the lateral direction and the longitudinal direction now we need to measure where it is height wise so to do that we need to a little configuration change here this is a just a little thing I had made up just to allow me to accurately raise the car a known height on the rear so that we can measure the height of the center of gravity so this is 102 millimeters and I always use the uh, scales all the, way, all the way around even though we won't be taking any readings off the rear that just means that everything's set the same same height and we don't have to make any corrections for uh, for the thickness of the scales so we just get everything set back on here So we're going to measure the weight on the front wheels. And this measurement is fairly sensitive. So you usually want to take a few, few readings. So this one's 411.9 plus 394.5. And let's just reset it again. Just so we have four hundred and ten point three and three ninety three point one. So those two are fairly close. So I think that's a, that's a good uh, number set to use. So that is it. That's how you measure the center of gravity. Now we just need to uh, start punching numbers into RC Crew Chief. So I'm going to go away and calculate all the dimensions that we've measured. And uh, we'll be back and... and